Every year, there are a few memorable stars from college, guys that sell out stadiums. Some become NFL stars, and some become major busts. But some we just forget about and just seem to disappear without us realizing it. So today, I've compiled a list of players over the last decade or so that you probably haven't thought about. If these guys played college ball today, I would definitely go and see them. Which brings me into my next point. If you guys are planning on going to any games or events this year, just use the app SeatGeek. I know I'm trying to go to a few NFL games this year, so I'm definitely using it. SeatGeek is an app that puts tickets from all over the web in a single place, making the whole buying experience simple. They rate these deals on a scale of 1 to 100, with the higher the number, the better the deal. And if you use my promo code KTO, you will get $20 off your first purchase. So I'm going to drop the link in the description. Honestly, you might as well just get the app just in case. You don't want to lose out on cheap tickets. Anyways, let's get back into the video and jump into this list. Quick note, there is no particular order. I'm not ranking these guys higher or lower than one another. I'm just simply listing them out. Number one, the day one of the most infamous college quarterbacks of all time, Johnny Manziel won the Heisman Trophy, sitting to his left was his polar opposite, Colin Klein. Manziel may have won the Heisman, but I don't know if he was more valuable than Klein. Growing up in a small town in Colorado, Klein was a Christian man who, honestly, he became the next Tim Tebow. Just wasn't all in your face about it. And as important as Tim Tebow was to Florida, Colin Klein was that or more to Kansas State. I mean, look how similar their rushing numbers were. This is Tim Tebow's Heisman Trophy season compared to Colin Klein's Heisman finalist season. Over the span of the 21st century, K-State was the laughingstock of the Big 12. But towards the turn of the decade and the rise of Colin Klein, these guys became serious contenders. Going into 2012, they had their eyes on the national title. Early in the season against number six Oklahoma, they showed the college football world what they were all about. Klein scored a fourth quarter touchdown and later sealed the deal. They would win and win some more. All of a sudden, they were 10 and 0 and ranked number two in the nation. Then, Colin Klein played one of the worst games of his entire career, ultimately costing him a Heisman Trophy as well. They still ended up going to the Fiesta Bowl, and after getting pummeled by Oregon, K-State quickly vanished as fast as they rose up. Colin Klein tried out for the NFL and didn't stand a chance. Team scouts wanted him to play tight end, and when he said no, he was gone like that. He tried his hand in Canadian football and didn't make it there either. To be honest, he is probably a slightly worse version of Tim Tebow, but he's still one of my favorite players of all time. Number two. The rise of Chip Kelly in Oregon football brought a certain type of running back, and the one who started it all was LaMichael James. Obviously, Duck fans will remember him and the Pac-12 teams who he terrorized, but I feel he gets forgotten about due to the rise of guys like DeAnthony Thomas and Kenyon Barner putting up crazy stats. Also, Marcus Mariota kind of became the poster child of Oregon football after dominating for years and winning the Heisman Trophy. But still, LaMichael James was the man. He went into the 09 season as the backup, but after LeGarrette Blunt got suspended for doing this, the freshman running back stepped into the starting role, and boy was he special. With the offense evolving to be centered heavily around him, this team quickly went from the Holiday Bowl to a national title appearance in two years. His sophomore season, they averaged 47 points a game, and this was when Darren Thomas was their quarterback. For his career, he finished with an average of 137 yards a game, and with at least 1,500 yards in each of his three seasons before officially declaring for the draft. The two-time All-American landed late in the second round to the San Francisco 49ers, and he never really played. He appeared in four games his rookie season, and after three years, he signed to the practice squad for the Dolphins and was eventually waived. He could be considered a bust, but he mostly just fizzled away due to the lack of playing time. You would remember a guy more like Trent Richardson because he was clearly bad enough to be a major bust, whereas you just stopped hearing the Michaels name. But he still helped build a dynasty in Oregon. Number three. The 2014 NFL QB class is one of the most memorable classes in recent memory. Derek Carr, Johnny Manziel, Teddy Bridgewater, Blake Bortles, and others. But there seems to be one guy who gets forgotten. Of the top 10 rushers in the nation, number two was a quarterback, Jordan Lynch. 
the dude nearly ran for 2,000 yards as a quarterback, which that set the all-time college football record for rushing yards by a QB. He also had a game that season where he ran for 321 yards. That's another NCAA record. Yeah, take a guess at what position he tried to play in the NFL. During his junior year is when he started to get national recognition. After dropping their first game, he led Northern Illinois to 12 straight wins. But look at some of these teams they played. Their most impressive win was Kent State. Normally, MAC teams don't have this good of a record, and the BCS computers put them in the Orange Bowl versus Florida State, which at the time pissed off a lot of people. Because of the Boise States and the TCUs of the world, there were people who said give them a chance. And to keep it short and sweet, Florida State put them in their place. Jordan Lynch would bounce back the next season with video game-like numbers, and the team started 12-0, but they weren't getting the same respect in the polls. And after an ugly loss in their conference title game, they were history. Jordan Lynch never played a down in the NFL, but he ended up scoring the game-winning touchdown in the Grey Cup for the Eskimos in the CFL. He is now retired from football. Number four. There's one stat you can show that defines this man's legacy. 50 and three. That's the career win-loss record for Kellen Moore, the winningest college quarterback of all time. Kellen Moore is the oddball of the players on this list. Take away his throwing ability, he is the biggest non-athlete goober you've ever seen. He could barely move, plus he was tiny, but man, he may be the smartest and most accurate quarterback in college football history. He splashed onto the scene his freshman year after upsetting Oregon and Eugene. And after consistently dominating, he led Boise State to a Fiesta Bowl victory over TCU. Entering his junior season, Boise State was number three in the nation. And after taking down Virginia Tech in Blacksburg, Boise State seemed destined to play for the national title. Being ranked as high as number two, they were crushing everybody. And at the end of the season, they had one tough game left versus Colin Kaepernick in Nevada. Nevada wasn't going down without a fight. At the end of the game, with seconds remaining, tied at 31, this is how close Boise State came to playing for a national title. Steps up, airs it out, looking for Titus Young. Did he catch it? After losing in overtime, the dream season ended. Boise State will probably never come that close to playing for a national title again. With never losing more than a game in a season, 50 wins in a career will be hard for any quarterback to pass in college. They would have to average 12 and a half wins a season for their entire career. With the lack of size and arm strength, Kellen Moore ended up going undrafted. And other than the cries of Boise State fans, there wasn't really any talk about him after that. Cowboys fans should remember him after he filled in at quarterback two seasons ago. But even a record-setting performance gets forgotten after what Dak Prescott has done. All the guys on this list were statistically dominant and are pieces to why college football can be so exciting. But it just goes to show you, prototypical play style and size are more critical than statistical dominance. TCU coach Gary Patterson sharing a moment right now with Kellen Moore. Of course, one of the great quarterbacks that Gary Patterson has ever faced. And coach, I don't want to ever face him again. 